If you're anything like me, you've often found yourself sitting under a tree and wondering to yourself, if Jesus had a mustache, would it have looked like this or like this? The other thing I wonder about while sitting under trees is, where does all the tree mass come from? Usually when I ask this question, my brain just kind of wanders around a little in search of logic to catch hold of, but not today. Today, I went digging for an answer on where trees get their mass, and this is what I found. Trees get their mass from the soil, obviously. We've all heard about how crops have to be rotated every few years because of all those nutrients that they are sucking out of the ground. No one likes a dust bowl. So naturally, along with all those other nutrients, come building blocks for trees to make them bigger and whatnot. So now that we've answered that question, we just have to figure out what to do with these giant holes that have been left in the ground from all the building blocks that disappeared. Hold up. That doesn't check out. There's a giant hole in this explanation. Let's go back to the drawing board. Trees get their mass from the water they take in, obviously. Every day, trees are taking in 8 metric butt loads of water, so at least some of that is going to be turned into tree parts in at least some stage of the development. Right? Unfortunately, this is also a dead end. Of course, water is very important in the life of a tree. Water is necessary to combine with carbon and sunlight to create sugar, or glucose, which the tree eats to stay alive. But that food is just there to keep the cells energized. It doesn't actually leave any excess material lying around to use for branch building. Well then, trees get their mass from the sunlight. Obviously? As we just discussed, sunlight is an essential part in photosynthesis, and the tree would die without it. But the photons that are hitting the leaves of the tree don't carry building blocks with them either. They are just tiny fists with energy attached to them. So what the heck? What else is there? To all you astute observers out there that are yelling the correct answer at me, thank you, but go fork yourselves. Trees get their mass from the same place that magicians pull their rabbits from. Thin air. Let me explain. As everyone knows, the happy little life forms on planet Earth that run around pulling rabbits out of hats have to breathe in oxygen to keep the rabbit pulling going for any extended length of time. As everyone also knows, when those little life forms breathe out, it is not the same oxygen that went into their lungs that jumps out, but CO2 instead. And as most people know, but don't often remember, CO2 stands for one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. Who here can tell me what kind of life forms are carbon based? Give a cookie to that kid in the front row. That's right, everybody, the trees. So trees take in your cast off little CO2 molecules, gobble them right up, slice off that carbon atom and shunt the oxygen right back out into the atmosphere. If you'll remember from earlier, trees need water, sunlight, and you guessed it, carbon to power their photosynthetic glucose cooking habits. But what we didn't talk about is how only some of that carbon is used to make energy for the cells, and whatever is left over gets put to use doing other fun things, like building branches, roots, leaves, birdhouses, pantries for squirrels, hive havens for bees, etc. So now you know, sort of, where a tree that is 300 feet tall and 16 feet in diameter got all of the building blocks it needed to put itself there.